In this training demo, we are going to look at SQL Server 2014 download and installation. This is being brought to you by SQL Server 2014 tutorial.com. So uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, items. Well, as far as installation, uh, you should be aware of minimum hardware and software requirements when it comes to installation of SQL Server. So these include um, quite a few things. We have highlighted uh, basically the top ones here. So you need to have .NET 3.5 SP1 framework as a requirement. You also need Windows PowerShell 2.0. Regarding the CPU on your machine, uh, you know if you're using a 64-bit uh, system, you need to have at least 1.4 gigahertz or faster. Two uh, gigahertz is obviously recommended. We are running. Uh, we're going to run the installation on two point on this machine, which is 2.6 gigahertz, so we should be good. Now, as far as the operating system, uh, SQL Server 2014, you know, standard can run on Windows 7, SP1, um, Windows 8, Windows Server 2008, and also Windows Server 2012. If you are trying to install, let's say, Enterprise, uh, you do have a few more gotchas. We can definitely. Uh, Towards the end of this slide, I will show you the page you know, where everything is listed in detail. Now, uh, regarding RAM, you need to have minimum of uh, 1 GB. The recommended is definitely uh, you know, more, like 4 GB or more. I'm currently running, um, you know, I'm going to run, I guess, uh, well, this machine is running 4 GB. Now, regarding hard disk space, you need to have at least uh, 6 gigabytes. I do have lots of uh, space on this machine, so that should not be an issue. Now, if you wanted to know more information on hardware requirements, I would check out this page. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, this is over here. Um, this is our website, by the way. You can definitely check that, uh, that out. I'm, I was going to point that towards the end. Now, if you go to the uh, the Microsoft website that is listed in the uh, in the in the slide deck, you will notice that this is where you know you can get further information on um, to get minimum hardware requirements for installing SQL Server 2014, and you can obviously Google that and you should be able to find that as well. Uh, okay, so that's that. I need to go back to my PowerPoint. So as far as installation of SQL Server 2014 software. Um, you know, here is the location for that. Uh, we are going to go there in a minute, but basically, uh, you know, when you are there, you're going to click on Evaluate SQL Server 2014. You're going to select a version. Uh, you have two options. You can actually uh, download uh, files to your machine. I believe they're called CAB files. Uh, we are going to actually choose the option of ISO, which is really, you know, the uh, image image that you can burn uh, a DVD from so like I said the other option is to is to you know download this file and I will highlight all of this on the website in a minute but I just want to you know tell you information uh, so that you have a good idea then uh, the next thing you do is you download the file which we have already done now one thing you need to be aware of you, you it will ask you to log into uh, live.com which if you you know haven't done that uh, you can certainly do that um, next you know essentially uh, we had to burn a DVD we already did this step and then finally launch the you know full installation from the DVD so th those are the steps let me go ahead and show you this okay <clears throat> so when you go here uh, you know on Microsoft.com uh, like I said, you you know you are going to get a few options. I'm going to go ahead and uh, well, first things first. Let's go ahead and sign in, okay? Because um, it won't it won't let me get too far without this. So go ahead and log into this, and then uh, <clears throat> once you do that, then it'll it'll take you back. Now you can go ahead and uh, click on try okay and so you know here you have different options okay you can you know we are going to actually choose this one but you you could certainly download an express version you can also look at uh, SQL Azure and some of these other options so when I click here 
okay it's uh, basically telling me that okay you can download the eval version uh, from the site this is uh, going to be an enterprise version and then as far as what are my options so this is what I was talking about we chose to go with the ISO okay and so you know when you do that and you click get started now it's actually going to ask a few things so I will just go ahead and hit continue on this one um, just some profile information and I will do that again hit basically next again we're not going to go through the step I just wanted to highlight this point uh, so now uh, let's see <clears throat> it's asking me to download the installer that will actually be the one used in the uh, installation Okay, so <clears throat> so this is actually the installation part I'm actually going to pause the video till this is all done Okay, so I'm done. I uh, it basically all that I was doing was it was installing the the program that will let you install the actual file. So now I'm getting this uh, prompt here. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Okay, um, <clears throat> and we're not we're not going to uh, you know go through this completely, but you can tell here on the right side that I am in fact downloading the SQL Server 2014 x86.iso okay so I'm actually going to go ahead and pause this one here uh, okay and actually in fact what I'm going to do is you just uh, just kill this I just I just wanted to show you this option the the other option is to do the cab file and that's uh, that's similar in concept you're not going to use a DVD for this but this one you are going to use a DVD so after we were done installing we actually went ahead and burnt a DVD and if I browse to my uh, uh, my drives on my machine, you can see that this is the, I'm looking at the DVD drive, okay. And uh, when I, you know, <clears throat> I guess uh, burnt the image onto a DVD, these are the files that were extracted, or you know, essentially put on the DVD. All you really need to do here is you need to come and click on setup.exe, okay. So, so when you do that, this should launch the SQL Server installation process in fact I'm going to go ahead and close this one because we already did this part so we don't need that uh, <coughs> oh I'm sorry I think it was this this one here I clicked on the wrong file it's the actual uh, the, the setup uh, file so now it's 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 launching the SQL Server 2014 installation I believe the other one was was more like a configuration file so while that's that's uh, coming up let's continue with our last slide like I mentioned you you need to click on setup.exe we are going to do a standalone installation okay uh, it's going to take us through a few screens so let me just highlight some of the important points uh, first uh, before it does anything it goes ahead and does uh, you know set up files configuration the next thing it does is um, it sets up some of the support rules these are basically the prerequisites that are necessary for the ins install now as for the installation you know your installation is going to vary a lot more than what we're trying to do but I will highlight some of these important things that you should be aware of you should really install uh, only the features that are necessary okay you can always add and remove features later so for example you know if you're not going to use uh, let's say analysis services or reporting services does it really make sense to install that software I don't think so uh, you know if you are using let's say integration services go ahead and choose um, you know SSIS but it's not necessary to put things that you will not be using so now as far as uh, another thing we will highlight when you're uh, you know using I guess it will ask you what services 
uh, you need to be running and under what account. It is preferred that you run SQL services under a domain account and not a local system account. This has to do with the security, uh, you know, level of security, so that's preferred. Also, the data files should be really installed on a separate drive, and the log files should also be installed on a separate physical drive for performance reasons. So that's really, you know, some of the points. If I go back here, now we are actually at the uh, installation point, okay? Again, uh, there, there's quite a bit of uh, information in here, uh, and, you know, you are welcome to look at this. Um, at work, in fact, we install SQL using, you know, a con configuration file, but here, um, I'm not going to look at any of this stuff. I'm simply going to the installation tab and I'm going to select new SQL Server standalone installation. Okay, you can also do a cluster, uh, you know, failover cluster installation if that is what you are interested in. We'll give this a few uh, seconds here to load up. And I may have to, in this video, I will have to pause and, you know, restart the video a few times because these things do take time. So let me go ahead and pause this video again. So I'm back. Basically, um, it, st it started installing and then it's asking me that it cannot find, uh, you know, the Windows Update service. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Next. Now, this is the part I was telling you about that is going to, you know, in, go ahead and install some of the uh, necessarily files that are needed. So after it did the uh, the check and the and the setup files, now we are on this screen. It's asking us. Okay, you know, for the part of key. So, uh, you know, obviously we're setting up an eval edition. You can also select uh, Express if you wanted to. Now, if you did have a part of key, if you're installing this in a uh, corporate environment and you already have a licensing, you will go ahead and do that. So that would be the only difference here. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I will accept the license terms. I was never really good at uh, reading a lot of verbiage. So now, we are here at the feature level. Um, you could certainly, in, uh, you know, install Power Pivot if you wanted to, or some of the other options. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the first one and uh, click Next. All right. So this is what I was mentioning before. You should only really select the things that you are, you know, wanting in your environment, okay? So for our case, like I said, I'm going to choose database engine services, okay? Um, I'm going to skip over some of these things. Uh, data quality services I can use. I don't really need um, um, <clears throat> reporting services. I guess we can go ahead and install that. 